Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Sean Papp. I'm the uh, commercial manager for the Electric Rope Shovel Product Group. I'd like to welcome you today to uh, our, uh, our webinar here on our new technology package and our new operator assist package. Uh, we're looking to bring this to the market beginning in 2023. Very excited about it. It's a it's a new platform for us, and and I think it's been a, a long time coming for us as a as a product group. So, very excited that uh, everyone's been able to join us today, and and excited for us to go over uh, the new technology offerings that we'll have for both uh, new machines and and for aftermarket. Uh, one thing I do want to preface today's discussion is um, it's going to be very technical orientated. It, there won't be a lot of discussion around commercial, um, and, and, and we did that intentionally, and I'll cover that a, a bit more here in a moment. But uh, again, the, the, the nature of today's discussion will be to give a more technical background and technical details on the new uh, platforms that we're bringing to the market. Safety quality values, this is something that we as Caterpillar, we like to, to call out before every discussion. I'm sure all of you on the line today, safety is number one as it is for us. And um, again, doing quality work, wh whether that's providing information or or the, the end product and making sure that we, you know, give our customers the best experience uh, through quality uh, processes and quality products. And of course, uh, we live by our values um, and, and work by our values every day. I do, this is uh, what I was gonna touch upon earlier from a commercial standpoint. So please note that there are, um, I'm, I'm assuming dealer represents representatives on the line, uh, customers, competitors. At the end of the day, we, you know, as competitors, we need to make independent business decisions and we need to make sure that we're not sharing any competitively sensitive information. So again, that, that's why today we're gonna focus on the technical uh, more so than on the technical. And you know, again, some topics to avoid. If you see on the right-hand side in that gold shaded box, you know, anything with pricing and margins, credit terms, uh, uh, purchase agreements, that type of thing, we will not be discussing that today. Just because, again, we've got such a broad audience on the line today. Be safe, be present, champion the power of everyone, win the right way, and be cyber safe. Again, these are these are items we like to call out before every discussion that we have, as we feel it's very important that not only do we maintain this uh, throughout the workday, but also take this uh, home with us uh, every day um, um, in, in applying this to our everyday life. We do ask that you be present. Um, again, we uh, anticipate this will go about 45 minutes today, and uh, we're thankful everyone took the time out today, and we're going to go over a lot of detailed information. So. It'll be good for uh, for everyone to uh, uh, stay dialed in and and um, digest everything as as it's shared. So, quick quick question here for the group, um, and you can just go in and select. But wanted to get a better feel for what is your familiarity with uh, cat electric rope shovels? Uh, as you can see, there are five different selections, but brand new to cat ERS. You've heard of them, but maybe uh, you're not a rope, you don't utilize rope shovels, or maybe you utilize uh, some competitive shovels, somewhat familiar, very familiar, or a huge fan. So, um, hoping when uh, when we transition to the next slide, that huge fan will be uh, the predominant choice, but uh, no wrong answer here. We'll give everyone a moment here to uh, to submit before moving on. And what I would say before we move on is, uh, again, this is technology focused, but if there are any questions outside of this discussion, uh, feel free to reach out you know, to us. Uh, contact information will be available. If you're an end customer, please reach out to your local CAT dealer and, and talk to the mining representative. Um, and then from there, we can uh, open up lines of communication on anything uh, rope shovel re related that we can assist with. So let's see what we got here. All right, so it looks like we've the uh, very familiar, somewhat familiar uh, is, is over 50% of the uh, responses. Uh, a couple of you brand new to CAT or uh, ERS and, and uh, down on the bottom, they're huge fans. So. We'll see what we can do to uh, to increase that number here uh, 
over time. So again, appreciate the feedback on this and uh, we'll continue on. So why are we here today and, and why are we making this change as a product group? So, um, you know, one thing I'll note here is that if you purchased a cat rope shovel and you purchased the, the technology package, the technology platform that you purchased 10 years ago, and if you made that purchase today, very similar, There's there's been little changes to the technology platform that we've offered um, and, and we wanted to change that. We what we uh, really uh, wanted to bring to the market here is a platform that seamlessly integrates into the, the current uh, Mindstar suite of technology and leverage site-based technology. Um, many of you uh, have CAD equipment operating at site, whether it's uh, dozers or uh, uh, large mining trucks, uh, other support equipment that are running on the, the Mindstar platform. And we wanted to bring um, a technology solution to the market that allows us to integrate into that mine ecosystem. Uh, so that was one of the major uh, drivers for this. We also wanted to develop a platform that ultimately is a building block for future technology expansion. I think for many of you, if you've been in the industry for say 10 years or so, when you think about where the role that technology played even, you know, seven, eight, nine years ago and, and the role that technology plays on equipment today, you know, to, to me it's night and day. So I think we'll continue to see technology evolve uh, over time here. So it was very important for us to introduce a platform that was easily, uh, that easily enabled us to, uh, to build on that, um, on that backbone that, uh, that we put into place. Uh, we wanted to make a system that's uh, very easy to maintain and, and also easy uh, to to, uh, to maintain or sorry to enhance um, moving forward. Here you'll see uh, from moving from left to right. So our, our legacy package consists of Midas Access Direct Aculode. Uh, vibration monitoring, which was actually an optional uh, attachment and not a part of the legacy technology package and bearing temperature monitoring. So one of the criteria that we had is we wanted to make sure that with the new technology platform that we had essentially an apples to apples replacement for each of those features. So as you migrate over to the first column there in gold, that is our new integrated technology package. And that's what you would, with the purchase of a new shovel and the purchase of this technology package, these are the uh, the, the features that you would um, have as part of that technology package. So as you can see, machine health uh, replaced Midas. We have our OEAs and ECMs that help with the dispatch interface and getting the offboarding, um, the information to the back office, uh, the payload management system, cycle segmentation, which is a new feature, the vibration monitoring, um, the system itself or, or the, the, uh, the feature is a bit different than the vibration kit. Brian will cover that momentarily, but that is now a part of our vib vibration monitor, or sorry, that's now a part of our integrated technology package. And we've also brought over the bearing temperature monitoring feature. So again, in our mind, we've, we've replaced um, all the legacy features uh, with with new features, and we've actually expanded on the technology package. So we feel that uh, customers are getting uh, more bang for your technology buck, if you will. As you continue to move over into the middle column there, under the operator assist package, you'll see two that are highlighted: enhanced motion control. So many of our uh, customers today are are uh, utilizing the operator assist one. Uh, uh, feature, which is a part of this enhanced motion control uh, option. But we've also added an additional feature to that, um, which is a, a radius limiter. Brian will cover that in a moment. And we're very excited to uh, to share with you today our new machine self-protect feature. Again, I don't want to steal Brian's thunder here, but it's focused on dipper strikes to the crawlers, to the cable management system, uh, boom bumpers, et cetera. So Brian will cover off on, on that in a moment. Um, one thing to note, the operator assist package, in, in order to utilize that, you do need to have the integrated technology package. Um, and then ultimately, as you continue to move over to the right, like I mentioned earlier, 
the goal here was to then integrate into the site-based technology that, that our customers are using today. And again, having the rope shovel be a part of that technology uh, ecosystem. Not gonna spend a lot of time on, on this uh, before turning it over to Brian, but just wanted to give some context here. So um, as we were developing the different features for the new technology options, we did reach out to customers to collect VOC. We worked with our dealers to collect VOD. And, and these are some very specific data points, but this first one here relates specific to the machine self-protect feature. And what we found in the feedback that we received is that um, our end customers were experiencing downtime on average between 60 and 70 hours annually associated with those events where the dipper was striking um, you know, some of those different areas on the machines that, that I highlighted earlier. Now, again, some sites higher, some sites lower, but to put some numbers around that, if you look at the different applications and, and going with very conservative numbers in terms of commodity pricing, you can see that that equates into, to, into real dollars real quick, um, you know, with the, the downtime that can be, um, you know, minimized or eliminated by the machine self-protect feature. Um, the next one down there with operator assist, you know, one of the key elements there is it helps prevent boom jacking, swinging in the bank, um, and those features can help increase life on the running ropes, on the boom, and some of the other hardware and accessories associated with the boom. Uh, increase cybersecurity, and you can see an example there of uh, what a breach can, can cost a customer. Um, and then last, you know, the health condition monitoring was, was a big feature, so to replace Midas with Mindstar Health was, was a, a big step forward for us. What we heard loud and clear from our customers, from our dealers is they really like the reporting features that, that Health offers, the flexibility, the customize, uh, uh, the customizability, the ability to customize, the, customize those reports. So, uh, which is something that we didn't have with our legacy offering. So again, another key feature for us. So with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Brian Schlatter, who's our technology manager, and he's gonna go through uh, the technical aspects of the, the new systems. Thanks, Sean. Um, as Sean stated, I'll be going over the uh, various technology packages that we have to offer for the electric rope shovels. So to start, we, we need to talk about our integrated technology system. The Integrated technology system is really our foundation for, for technology. It provides the, the platform that we can use to interface all of the various technologies that we're adding to the shovel. Uh, the, the heart and soul of this is the integrated technology cabinet. This houses the ECMs that are going to uh, be related to each technology. So you can see there that there's a uh, an ECM for the different technologies that I'll, I'll get into later later on in different slides for vibration monitoring for our payload and for the machine self-protection. So one of the key features of this uh, integrated technology system is our connectivity. So if you follow the, the cabinet there on the left to underneath the, the operator's cabin, the utility room, it's connected up to a radio that is uh, mounted on top of the cab. This is our our gateway to getting data on and off the machine and providing that increased security that that Sean was was talking about. So with the integrated technology uh, system, we're also up doing some updates to the operators displays. On the left hand side, you'll see the current st state of what our operator displays look like. There's a common rope and hydro crowd uh, picture for block picture for for the shovel, and and we're moving towards uh, a more um, picture picture based uh, graphic on the on the on the machine. So there's one for the rope crowd, and then one for the hydro crowd as well. And, and then each of the technology features will also have some sort of an alert, and it'll be highlighted for um, for the for the display and I'll get into those for each feature as, as we go through it. The other update for the operator display is the alarm screen. We're, we're not 
necessarily updating the graphics on this screen, but you'll, you will see enhanced alarms and notifications for the operator to to uh, uh, to notify them of, of op what the technology package is doing. So then going to our health and productivity, as Sean stated, the, the reporting system is is something that that we're we're looking forward to here with MindStar Health on on the ERS that this is available for customers to have have their their data uh, on the machine as they would like to see it. So this is the single interface to to show that machine data. This is fully customizable with the interface, and there is there is training on uh, the cat dealer websites on how to how to customize this. And, and you then are able to display the information that you are interested in seeing that is beneficial for you. So the first uh, technology that I'd, I'd like to talk about is, is payload. So our payload feature is, is a real-time measurement feature that includes uh, inertial and dynamic load compensation. So with this compensation, we're able to uh, grab measurements throughout the dig and swing cycles to increase operator awareness, uh, help with consistent truck loads, and improve truck payload compliance, all while optimizing shovel operation. And so what is included with the payload is it's the three main components are the wireless antenna up on top, the payload cabinet in the middle of the screen that's, that's green, and then the, the, uh, the instrumented pin on the bottom right uh, that is uh, in the in the dipper. So the the payload cabinet is there to to communicate the information from for the payload system to the technology cabinet. So the the instrumented pin will be measuring the payload data, which is then being sent wirelessly through to the antenna, which goes back to the payload cabinet. This is then sent to the technology cabinet, which which will use the ECMs inside the technology cabinet to to uh, process that data. Uh, so then, this is also this information is also sent then to the PLC uh, to the so that the operator gets it then through the OCC uh, display, and then also we can do that through my uh, send it off board through the PLE or MindStar. With the payload feature, we're also updating our displays. So some of the display and in, uh, information that you'll, you'll be able to see is our our last pass bucket load, it's what the current truck load is for for that truck, and then our truck count since the last shift shift, shift change. Excuse me. And then also with shift changes, we we have a full tonnage count. And then there is a last pass remove button. Uh, that that button is is reserved for if you're doing cleanup or you you picked up half a half a bucket or a dipper full and you need you you dump it but don't load it on the truck so you need to reset the the system for it. And then the last screen is showing the calibration of of the of the system to to aid with with the calibration. So you, you can see that. There's a red icon showing the dipper and handle uh, positioning. That that is where you need to place the dipper in order to uh, calibrate the system. And there's there's uh, assistance graphics uh, with with all of that. The next feature is the vibration monitoring system. So with the vibration monitoring system, uh, Sean alluded to that we have a vibration kit already today. Uh, this is this is being updated. So the vibration sensors uh, as they exist today are on the, the all of the motion gear cases and motors. So so you have hoist, you have swing, and you have crowd uh, vibration data. But currently, it's all just wired to a central location, and there is no processing of that data. Um, the vibration monitoring feature that we have with this tech, tech package, it, it, it includes that that uh, analysis and, and processing with, with certain subscription levels. But the way that we do this is we we have a an ECM local to uh, to each motion 
so for the hoist, for the, the swing and the crowd. And it's taking all of the vibration data from the sensors, collecting it and sending it to the technology cabinet. So the technology cabinet will then take that information uh, and gather it and either provide it to, in one of two ways, we can provide it to the, the customer database for, for collection as, as is, or we can send it to our servers in cloud to have CAD analytics, analytics look at it. Um, so that that's kind of uh, where this standard subscription and premium subscription come into play. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what you get with this in a, in a different slide, but the standard subscription is you get the data available for the customer uh, to do the analysis. And this also provides maintenance and upkeep of our systems. And then with the premium subscription, we have a uh, cat data analytics and condition indicator report uh, generation. Uh, you're gonna get a report and and uh, a monthly meeting with, with the cat analytics group to, uh, to go over any sort of trending that, that is happening with the system. So what's included in the vibration monitoring system? So this is just a snapshot of where everything is located on the machine. As I stated previously, we're putting an ECM uh, local to each function. So the hoist uh, ECM is located on the back uh, walkway by the control room. And then moving along, you have the swing ECM right next to the, the right-hand swing. And then the crowd ECM is on the outside of the utility room. So all these ECMs take the uh, accelerometers uh, local to the, the for, for each motion. So uh, the hoist ECM is responsible for that, those gear cases and, and motor accelerometers. And overall in the system, there are 50 accelerometers uh, throughout the system. Then this information is then connected back to the technology cabinet, which is the teal box in the, in the right-hand picture. So going, so what, giving you a snapshot of, of what you could potentially see with the, the data coming out of the systems. On the left-hand side is, uh, you'll see the machine state da data. So this could be speeds and swing, uh, or speeds and position and various um, machine data with, there's, there's a couple hundred uh, different data points that are available for, for uh, analysis. And then also you provi we provide the raw acceler accelerometer data. So then this is the standard subscription offering, which will uh, provide the, the ability for the customer to uh, analyze their own data. Then uh, moving to the right is, is what we're offering, is an example of what we would be offering for, with the premium subscription. So we're we're going to have a monthly conference with the customer to go over reports and discuss trends and data and recommend uh, actions for uh, proactive maintenance. So you're going to get uh, a status of the machine, of the accelerometers. Is are they seeing any sort of trending with it? Is there any sort of uh, issues that they're 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 highlighting and and providing? So the process data will be available in a report and. This this can be this will be walked through with the uh, data analytics person and the the make sure that the customer understands what we're providing to them. Um, so, so the next feature is our cycle segmentation. So cycle segmentation is a, a feature that is to provide the productivity information to the, to the customer. This is done through MindStar Health Equipment Insights, and it is a software-only feature. What it's doing is it's taking uh, machine states in the PLC, so we're taking data from the PLC, sending it to the ECM in the technology cabinet, and, and it is taking that information, uh, breaking it out into different cycles and, and different segments, so whether you're loading or whether there's a bank preparation, you know, different different categories there, and then it's reporting it out to the to the MindStar Health Equipment Insights. Again, this is just a, a reporting feature. This is 
not uh, seen by the operator and it's meant to to provide reports and information on the performance and operation of the machine. So moving on to our operator assist uh, package, we have the enhanced motion control. And as Sean uh, alluded earlier, that many of you are familiar with uh, the enhanced motion control, but it's there to you know, improve shovel performance uh, for, our, for our customers and while having motions that aren't, aren't ideal. So I, the, the current system uh, prevents things from hoist stalls or boom jacking and reduces those and crowd impacts, crowd over speeds and swing into the bank. All of this is to help with production. So for the technology package, we're adding the propelled turn radius limiter to, to the uh, enhanced motion control. What this is uh, doing is we're reducing our tension buildup in, in the lower works by limiting our turning angles to less than 20 degrees. So the whole purpose of this is to prevent damage from on the lower works components. You can see all of the, the components that are there and that are available. We're, we're use, doing this uh, through a software only feature. So as the operator turns, they, they can see the angle that is uh, the, the machine is at with the turn radius. And if they exceed this 20 degrees, they will get a display, an alarm and, and a display in the in the operator's screen. It does not affect machine operation. It is there for a uh, notification only. The next feature I'd like to discuss is the machine self-protection. So with machine self-protection, we're looking at protecting the machine from itself. So we're trying to, to, to pre prevent collisions between the dipper uh, and a couple of key, key features. So our, our crawlers, our boom bumpers, and cable management system are the areas that are highlighted with this system. So we're trying to reduce maintenance costs um, and, and down, unplanned downtime with the system, as well as increase, increasing safety. Um, and it, it does help with the productivity of, of the novice operator. So how do we uh, achieve this for machine self-protection? There is uh, an additional hardware package that is installed. So we end up having a LiDAR installed on the front of the machine. So the, <clears throat> the LiDAR is then connected to the, the, the technology cabinet and, and the, the information is processed in the technology cabinet. So the, the LiDAR is scanning the bucket on the, on the bottom right. You can see the, kind of how, how it uh, scans and the, the projected imaging that it's going to have. It takes that information and uses the ECMs in the technology cabinet to, to project a path for the for the dipper given the operator input its current speeds and velocities and this information is then taken to to predict if it's going to collide with any of the the areas of the machine that we are are concerned about so if it's going to hit the tracks or the boom bumpers or our cable management system if we've detected that this is going to happen uh, the the system will give commands to the shovel and make a corrective action. The corrective action is, is meant to be smart enough that it's not going to inhibit the intent of the operator, but at, in some cases that, that may not be possible and, and the machine self-protection will do what it can to prevent the, the collision. So with machine self-protection, we're also updating our displays. Uh, you'll see that each display uh, provides an indicator of what portion of the machine that is being affected. So going working from left to right, if we have a dipper and track protection, we will be highlighting the dipper. Or I mean, the, the dipper and the, the tracks to to notify the operator that that a collision is about to occur and that the, the system is going to be taking control. Uh, 
this again goes for the dipper and the boom bumper protection. So we'll highlight the boom bumper. And then again, once again, for the cable management system on the back of the machine. That was a um, overview of our, our technology packages that we are offering. Um, he, provided here is uh, the reference material that, that covers this as well. Um, you can download this information is available in English and Spanish, and some of it may be selected to dealer only. And if that is the case, uh, please please contact your dealer to to um, to inquire about that information. There is also information in this webinar itself. Uh, on the left hand side, there is content available for download, and again, this is available in English and Spanish. All right, thank you, Brian, for the great presentation. We're gonna move into the Q&A portion now. Um, we did have quite a few questions come through, but if there are any, if you have any more questions, please put them into that Q&A feature. Um, this is a great time to take advantage of having our SMEs on the line. Um, all right, so Brian, first question for you. Um, is the radio how Caterpillar gets the, gets the information off the machine? Yeah, that is our standard um, way that we will get the information from the machine uh, and provide it to the different offsite uh, uh, features like MindStar Health that we talked about. Okay, great. All right, here's the next question. Does this payload feature auto advance to the next truck or does the operator still have to hit next truck? For the payload feature, we we still require the uh, operator to hit a next truck button. That That is currently, an auto advance feature is currently not included in, in our payload system. Okay, great, thanks. Um, Sean, I actually think this might be a good question for you. It's around the timing of when the packages will be available for dealers. So the question is, hi, when will um, EMC 2.0 be available for the dealers? Yeah, so good question. For new machines, uh, the first machine out of the factory in 2023 uh, will be equipped with the new technology packages from a aftermarket slash retrofit um, uh, perspective. Uh, we anticipate having uh, the, uh, the packages ready by end of Q2 2023. Great, thank you. All right. Uh, let's see, Brian, this is a good question for you. Does the LiDAR have any capabilities to detect, to detect GET that has fallen off the bucket and loaded into a truck? Our system is uh, not monitoring uh, GET at the moment. The, the machine self-protection is concerned with the dipper position and its uh, collision with other components of the machine. Good question so far. Please continue to submit them into that Q&A feature for us. All right, uh, let's see. The next question is, will legacy customers of OA1 have to migrate? Um, the, the existing OA1 uh, will continue to operate uh, with without this technology package. However, if they'd like to get any of the features that we've talked about today and for no, enhanced a motion control, the turn radius limiter, or the the uh, machine self protect the the operator assist package. Uh, you will you will need to uh, include get go into the, the new tech package, but the, the existing OA one will will operate as as is. Okay. All right. Here's another question for you. Does the payload system measure the payload in the dipper before the operator unloads the truck? So the um, the payload system is continually measuring the uh, the, the, the dipper weight. So that that would be uh, done before the operator unloads the truck. Okay. Great. Okay, it looks like that's the end of our questions. If there are any more, we'll give it a we'll give it another minute or so 
um, please, uh, please submit your questions into that Q&A feature. Uh, as a reminder, there is a survey on your screen. If you don't mind taking a minute to do that, it gives us valuable feedback and allows us for an opportunity to connect with you. Let's see. Um, okay, yeah. All right, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. So that concludes the webinar for today. Thank you again to Brian and Sean for answering those questions um, and for the great presentation. And thank you to the audience for attending. We hope you guys have a great rest of the day.